Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle. I'm with my good friend, Dr. Alex Estrada again, and we're going to be talking to you today about the various things that I feel like we need to get out, and particularly some of the questions that have been asked of us about Ebola. The inside the is Waiting on word from city or state officials to see of uh, what's going on, what they can tell us Good to see you again, sir. Good to see you. Great to be and on. And we've got all this Ebola stuff going right. on. So uh, what I thought I'd do is ask you a few questions if you would care to share us. First off, tell us about yourself. Uh, tell us what anything you want to tell us about Dr. Well, Alex Estrada. Uh, my, my background is not in infectious disease, but my background is in foot and ankle surgery, diabetic limb salvage, uh, traumatology, and essentially uh, I have a broad uh, range of experience. Uh, my main job, though, is a foot and ankle specialist. And so you also tell me about this military school because I can't remember because you get a lot okay. of information there, too. Are you allowed to talk about yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I'm a graduate of the School of Advanced Military Studies. It's part of the Command and General Staff College of the United States Army. Spent the year there. got a master's degree in operational art and planning. So there, it was a perfect marriage of my medical experience along with military uh, strategy and operational planning, which allows me to basically plan almost any sort of uh, plan for any sort of contingency or operation. Okay, fantastic. So, Ebola, uh, the first question I think a lot of people have asked because they're just confused is Is Ebola a bacteria or a virus, and why does that matter, and what's the difference? All right, so it, the main thing you have to remember with uh, differentiating between bacteria and viruses is that bacteria is a living microorganism and it has its own DNA. Viruses do not have their own DNA. Viruses need to latch onto a host and borrow its DNA in order to replicate itself. Whereas bacteria, bacteria are alive, they reproduce, they replicate, and they can do everything on their own. Viruses need a host. So how the virus works, broadly speaking, is it infects their host, it incorporates itself into the host cells and then uses the host cells to divide. And that's how the virus spreads. So Ebola, it, correct, is a virus. Exactly. But Ebola is a virus. Ebola is not a bacteria. Okay. So first things first, I guess, is how can you get Ebola? How can you get the virus? Right. So right now, from what we know of e Ebola, Ebola was discovered in the mid-70s. And it, uh, it is a hemorrhagic fever, okay? So it's a fever that causes um, hemorrhaging. And what we know now is that it's only by direct contact with bodily fluids. So that's direct contact with any body, a bodily fluid. If someone is sweat, coughing, mucus. Uh, sweat, mucus, excretions, right. any, anything. Okay. okay. Um, right now, from what we know, World Health Organization, Doctors Without Borders, uh, the CDC is that it's not airborne so if someone has it and they're coughing and they're sneezing next to you theoretically you can't get it but as we know if somebody sneezes and their snot goes flying and it gets in your eye or gets you know it gets on your hand or you touch something that they touched get that on your hand get that into your body then it's it's uh, contagious that way so uh, it sounds like the biggest concern is just basically being in the same presence with somebody. I mean, right. is there a possibility that this virus can sit on, let's say somebody uh, puts it on the door handle, can you come by two days later, or do we even know how long it'll last on its own? Right now, the data is inconclusive as to how long it's alive um, on a surface, okay? Generally, viruses don't stay alive on surfaces for more than maybe a, a couple hours at most. Oh, wow. Okay, so I, I don't think that a day it will make a difference, but what they're finding out in Africa is that um, when people die, the virus does stay alive in the blood and other bodily fluids of that dead body for several days. So that is a oh, huge wow. problem. So that is one of the main problems that they're having in Africa uh, with disposing of the bodies. Culturally, they don't cremate in, in those countries. Um, here we do. So the ideal situation would be just cremate the bodies, get rid of it all, burn it all, and, and, and you're done. And that is not an option in those countries. So as far as what we can do, if we were to get some supplies, what would we get to 
to take care of ourselves, to protect ourselves. Sure. I mean, you start off simple, hand sanitizer, wash your hands frequently. Now, uh, that hand sanitizer, does it mean have alcohol or bleach? Just, or? just regular, theoretically, just washing your hands, that in and of itself, will wash the virus off you. It won't kill the virus, but it'll wash the virus off you, and washing hands is conceptually all you need. Hand sanitizer is just good to have, okay? Hand sanitizer, um, being that it's alcohol-based, at least 70% or greater, will kill the virus, mm -hmm. okay? Um, you know, as far as... Which is the other thing, the infectious disease doctors were telling me about the staff I just had in my knee. Right. It's just wash my hands more often, which I, it's just something I think we all know, but, I mean, sure. we just need to do. We need to listen to you guys and do what you tell us to do. Exactly. So, so sometimes, I mean, you, you, know, you, know, you have to uh, think, uh, think smarter, not harder. Keep it dumb, keep it simple, and it works. When I was an intern, I was learning to do surgeries. Um, you know, I had, a, I had an attending surgeon, and he would roll his sleeves up, wash his hands with good old ivory soap, wash his hands, and go into surgery. And the man never had a problem. Yeah. Now, today, in the OR, and even back then, we have these fancy surgical scrubs. All that stuff is good. But at the end of the day, simplicity is bliss. Right. Keep it simple, and usually it's good enough. And common sense goes a long way. So... Doc, one of the things that some of the people were asking me about is the dilution ratio. If right. we wanted to clean something up, or not necessarily we wanted to, but we were put in a position where we had to. Sure. Even in a survival situation where there's not a lot of opportunities to get cleaning supplies, what what would we do? What kind of ratio would we make? Sure. Uh, basically, what the CDC, is, CDC and World Health Organization is recommending is a 1 in 10 dilution of regular household bleach to tap water. That's simple enough. Simple, uh, simple and cheap. Again, you all, I can't tell you enough how much bleach is an important prepping item, so make sure you have some bleach in your kit. What about this? Okay. Tell me about these guys. So the, about these. The, these are the N95 masks. They're uh, readily available. 3M is the most common uh, brand to get them in. Okay. Uh, some websites, some other places are recommending a uh, N100 mask. So N100 versus N95, all that does is it just designates... Uh, the size of the particle that the mask will filtrate, but N95 is more than adequate to filter a virus. Now, we spoke about Ebola not being airborne yet, um, so the mask, conceptually, they say, uh, they, they say it's overkill. I don't think so, because my main concern with Ebola is that right now, it's strictly a contact pathogen. In other words, it, it, you get it by coming in contact with something or someone that's infected, and it gets into your body. But as uh, we know his, from historical fact, the, the Black Plague, the Black Plague started off as a virus only transmitted by fleas. So as long as the flea didn't bite you, you didn't get it. Um, but viruses are a little bit different than bacteria also in that they mutate easier. So with the Black Plague, which killed almost, uh, I think, you know, more than a quarter of the population of Europe, that virus mutated. And that virus became strictly fl from a flea-borne uh, 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 pathogen, okay, mm -hmm. to an airborne pathogen and mutated. And now people that are coughing and sneezing and you're all breathing the same air, now people are getting the black plague. So I still, I mean... So if, that could happen with Ebola. that said, I mean, if somebody mm -hmm. is in close proximity and close proximity and they cough and droplets come out of their mouth and go into my mouth or my eye... That's it. It's over. Then then there's a possibility that I can contract Absolutely. the Ebola virus. So Absolutely. Again, uh, for example, my wife just got on an airplane. I got her a couple of masks so that she could have those with her. I think that was a good idea because there's everybody's in close proximity to one another. Right. All right, so um, what else? Any final thoughts on Ebola? Anything we can share? I think that's covered the questions that I had that I know the people that have been writing me. Sure. Uh, in our, but is there anything else that you think you, we can add in? If not, we're good. Sure. I mean, uh, nothing that comes to mind is the issue of how deadly Ebola is, yeah. okay? So statistically, I'm a scientist. I live and breathe statistics, no pun intended. <laughs> but, uh, you know, numbers don't lie, okay? So basically, if you look at Ebola, Ebola is a very dramatic disease, and that's what gets it into the media. People get it, they get hemorrhaging, they start bleeding from everywhere, and they, they, they die a very ugly death. Okay, but when you look at it statistically and compare it to other diseases, other viruses, HIV, hepatitis, the common flu, more people die from that and have a more of a likelihood to die from that than they do to die from Ebola. I guess that, that brings up another question I didn't put in my notes, but 
Okay. I had read somewhere when I was trying to research to even to interview you that even in this country, we might have a better chance at fighting Ebola just simply because, you know, Africa doesn't have the same health care. We've got you guys. Right. And it might not, and I'm not trying to detract from Ebola saying it's not a bad thing. It's just, it would seem like if we have situations, we can help take care of them better. Is that correct too? Or that, or? That's, um, that, that, that's partially correct. Okay. Um, the main thing is the difference with the healthcare here versus in Africa, for example, is there is no treatment for Ebola. Okay. So the treatment for Ebola is what we call in medicine, supportive care, care to support that patient. Okay. So give that patient fluids, give that patient electrolyte replacements, um, give that patient pain medication, keep them comfortable. And they don't necessarily have access to all that in Africa. Um, as far as containment, well, conceptually, we have better isolation wards in the hospital. So if one person get it, gets it or two people get it, we put them in one ICU unit and keep them isolated versus in Africa. They're dirt floor hospitals and huts, and that's going to do very little to it to contain the, uh, contain the bug. Fantastic. Is that it, sir? I'm good. All right. So we're fist bumping, right? Yeah, we're we're, we're fist bumping. No shaking hands. Man, I like shaking hands. <laughs> I like fist bumping too, though. So, very much, I appreciate you being here and My taking the time. Actually, I'm not, I, he's not here, I'm here. I came to his house. He felt like this topic was important enough that he invited me in, so I really appreciate that very much. And so, if you have any questions, put them down below, and we'll make sure we get them covered with Dr. Estrada. We'll, if there's anything else that I don't have in the blog or the video, we'll make sure we get them answered for you. So, come on, join in, and let's learn together. The inside of each of Waiting on word from city or state officials to see uh, what's going on, what they can tell us.